Hey all, it's Eric Jensen, winemaker and farmer at uh, Booker Vineyard, my favorite neighbor wines. Man, I just, I, I can't get more excited. Each week is, man, he's cutting in on me already, man. Uh, oh, wait, each, I'm excited. Are you kidding me? Each week, it just seems like it gets better. This week is my new friend. We hit it off immediately. It's kind of like we're soul brothers. Uh, we just, we speak and feel the same language. Um, former Boston College superstar, NFL star, Will Blackman, um, who now in his second career is a psalm, runs a company, has a list, does a podcast. Uh, he's really one of the young new stars of our business. And, and we really, really need him in this tired, ancient, aristocratic, dirty old club of nice. only, only rich people. Um, and as you guys can see here, Riedel sent me a bunch of new glasses. They look like a damn honeycomb. I'm not sold on them yet, but they're, they're kind of they're, – they're growing on me. I haven't tasted out of them yet. I usually drink out of Zalto's will. But uh, anyways, Booker Nation. I have today. Zalto? Yeah. I just snapped about four last week and my last one, to be honest. And my people saw me drinking with my snapped one the last two weeks. But my favorite neighbor and Booker uh, family uh, – Will Blackman. Uh, Will, you're living now, uh, Ladera Ranch, Whoville. Uh, everybody's good looking. Everybody seems to be rich, driving Mercedes Benz, Lexus. Uh, uh, you know, the kids are perfect. Uh, nobody's out of line. Uh, how'd you end it? First question How'd you end up in Ladera? My wife is from Orange County. That's how we ended up here. Where at? What city? She's from Mission Viejo. Did she go to Mission Viejo High? She is a Diablo. Diablo. One of the, for those of you out there, Mission Viejo is one of the best sports cro uh, programs in the United States, predominantly football, but they're really good in every sport. Um, real you go there? No, well, we, we, we weren't allowed it through the gates of Orange County. I didn't have your kind of cash. I didn't have that kind of bankroll. We're going to change this whole narrative. I grew up in San Dimas. I was on the nice. – I was on the other side of the tracks in San Dimas, but so you, you know, you, Phil. Listen, we're gonna be nice because I heard you brought that whole vibe to Paso. That's yeah, what I heard. Yeah, come on yeah. now. Uh, so awesome. So Ladera Ranch, great place to live, great place to raise your family. Um, so real quick, let's run through. Um, first of all, I want to get into your business, but I got a couple questions because I remember you. I'm a lot older than you. I remember you playing at BC. And I made a joke. I killed you the other day on my Instagram. I said, yeah, tomorrow, man, I got this superstar, Will Blackman, played at Boston, All-American type player at Boston College. I says, yeah, I know most of you thought they only played flag football and eight man. But uh, so I killed you. But the reality was incredible program. You weren't in the ACC, though, yet when you were there, were you? Were you? Yeah, no, I first joined Boston College. First of all, it's impossible to kill me. I, I am I am so resilient. <laughs> like any, it's like Neo when the bullets come at him. I just I just actually no. I don't avoid him. I catch him. I look at him. So yeah, uh, B BC was in the Big East at first, um, and then 2005 we made the switch to the ACC. And so that was pretty fun, man. It's a different breed of competition. Uh, that was it was cool. And then not only that, but I was a defensive back for the first three years, and then my senior year I ended up switching full time to receiver. So. Uh, that was a fun and challenging uh, opportunity as well. And then, so you get drafted six feet apart. I got some guests today, Will, and they're all on top of each other. We can't have that, you know. Um, you get drafted. Yeah. Uh, where do you go? How excited are you? In those days, you, you just – it's a phone call. You don't even know, right? You're not – it ain't – No, it was, it was live on TV. And, Brett, you get a phone call before it gets announced, but – um, I ended up getting drafted in 2006 to, to the Green Bay Packers in the fourth round. Um, for me, football was – that was the dream. You know, that was, that was, that's the only thing I ever wanted to do was playing the National Football League. And, and being from Providence, Rhode Island, it seemed pretty much slim to none. You know, just it's, – it was difficult just uh, let alone to get a Division One scholarship, you know, other than playing – you know, let alone playing the NFL. But, um, yeah, fourth round to the Packers. And it was interesting because – I was excited to be drafted, but I just remember watching the draft and I was disappointed because not the fact that I went fourth round, but because so many people that I had actually 
played against and defeated went before me. So that's what made it. People are like, oh, you went fourth round, you should be excited. I said, I am excited. But it was a, the competition factor where a lot of people went before me. So um, went there for four years and then uh, ended up going to the New York Giants in 2010. Back up a second. And I apologize for ducking out of the screen, y'all. I had a big old lizard. I wanted to get him and hold him up. I missed him. We have one right here. We have a bearded dragon. His name is Draco. This one was like from outside, though. This one was wild in nature. Um, so let me ask you. When you went to the Packers, I got a, I had a bunch of buddies there. Did you play with Derek Mays or was he gone? Derek who? D. Mays, Derek Mays, receiver no, at Notre no. Dame. No. Rick Meyer was there or no? Rick Meyer? You, you know how old I am? Yeah, damn. I'm sorry, bro. These guys are my age, man. What am I? What am I? I'm going to text Rick that you said I like playing with him. Damn. Hold on, man. You'll be excited, man. Rick will be. Uh, Rick, right. Listen, Rick was drafted in 93. I know, I oh, know. No, no, actually, you know what? You, that's not far off. 92 that's not far was off. Rick's last year. Listen, 92. that's not far off because Rick Meyer was drafted in 93, but I did play a Brett Favre. Of course so, he, that's, he was there 32 was years. BC, oddly enough, the year Rick left, uh, broke Notre Dame's heart. They were still the best team in the nation that year by a long shot, but uh, – you guys broke their heart with a 47-yard field goal uh, that put Florida State in the national title, uh, which now in the BCS, uh, Notre Dame would have went to the Final Four and blown everybody out, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so you then go to New York. And by the way, you were projected a higher pick. I remember that draft. You, you ended up to the fourth. Once you get, especially in some of those other rounds, it becomes definite need. And I think you ran into a situation where maybe the definite need was at corner, and you see it every day where all of a sudden a guy falls 22 spots. So you go now to New York. Well, the, my whole dilemma was the fact that I was a all-conference returner, all-conference cornerback, all-conference receiver. It was like he can do a lot of things, but what, is, what did he master? You know, and the fact that I didn't master one position, that's why my projection was late first to early fourth. So it was, I mean, that was a long day. So fast forward, right, end up um, going to the Giants 2010, play that year, and then end up playing with them as well in 2011, and that's the year we won the Super Bowl, uh, beating the Patriots in Super Bowl 46. Uh, then I, when the contract is terminated, then I go on to play for hey, the – Slow down, uh, slow down a second. First of all, two things, two things. What is it? Why are you keep jumping yeah, in? This isn't Double Dutch? Yeah, it is. Listen. No, it's – it, it is. First of all, everybody, everybody pour some Ripper Grenache. Will, you saw the Tyree catch up live then, right? Oh, Mario Manningham on the sideline. That wasn't the Tyree year? No. It was the – okay. So it was the that year – 2007. Oh, that was when they were undefeated. Yes. Okay, did you – you didn't play against Moss, then Moss was the other one. No, Moss was the first one. Okay. We lost we, – when I was in the Packers, we lost to the Giants to go to the Super Bowl. In one of the worst situations ever. You guys blew the end of that game. Didn't Brett throw up one of the worst picks of his entire life near the sideline? Yeah, that was that was un I, – I, it took me a long time to get over that, man. Just <laughs> same with him in Minnesota because I liked him, so I followed him to Minnesota when they did the bounty, and, he, and, and that, that was the – that was the game when Minnesota AP put the ball in the corner. He just ran it five yards. Instead, he threw it across the inside. Of the threw field. it across his body. Could have run five yards, taken any game. And uh, didn't help that Adrian Peterson put the ball in the carpet about five times. And the two receivers dropped. They had eight turnovers in that game. But the cross his body killed him. Real quick, you guys, we're going to start with Ripper. Uh, Will, why don't you tell them in a, as a psalm in a lineup of big, heavy wines why you think we would start with uh, – a Grenache. Why would you at home? Well, well, for one, uh, the reason why I, I like the Grenache and you done because I know Paso is very similar to the terroir in Rome, um, where you can create a variety like that. But I just, I just, I think this is incredible. I love the color. Definitely some great, really nice ruby color uh, here in the middle. Um, I call it, yeah, probably medium ruby because I can barely see through it. You know, just using the song term. The aromas here for me is, is moderate plus here. And the really thing I like about this is you get a lot of like cooked fruit, you know, like stews, cherry, I mean, stews, strawberries, some nice cherry, 
uh, great color, great aromas, red flowers. And then even with Paso Grenache, I get some uh, eucalyptus in there too, you know, almost like a mint type of uh, aromas there. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's awesome. And I, I, obviously I had these and I love the fact that I just keep going to our mutual friend's house and snagging them. <laughs> well, the, the beauty about you and, and, and all, all y'all that follow uh, me know I don't get that descriptive. Uh, I, I, I go into it with one thing in mind, make it yummy, make it simple. Will, uh, I've, I've drank with Will before. We've tasted side by side. He's a talent. But I know he got a little fancy there because it's me. But one thing. Because it's I, you. That's, just how, that's how I go through the. That's how I go through it. But I know you do, but my point is, is the one thing that when I've been watching you, you're also very simple. You don't try to overwhelm your customers, the people that are right. on your list. You don't want to scare them off. And, and the reason I like following you, the reason I like what you do is because you haven't scared. Because let's face it, so you got a big following. You've got a big Instagram. You've got big probably everything. But what – what why you're going to take off and why you're going to be one of the next big things is because you're speaking very simple terms you're not embarrassing someone because they don't know what you know you're not embarrassing someone because they get something that you don't and that's what the old guard of song did the old guard when i grew up when i was your age they made you afraid and so a poor kid like me just said f it man and I ain't cussing because I don't know your people. My people play drinking games with how many times I cuss. I got to clean it up. But you're, 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 you're easy and you're simple. And I love that. And we need more of you. And keep doing that because the, the important thing is that we attract new customers. The important thing for your list, um, and we'll get into your list and, 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 and talk to my list about it, is that it is easy and simple. And you're looking to just find great pricing, especially in today's time, right? But oh, this no. wines that you dig and wines that have character that you like and that you don't have to say, well, you need to age this for 20 years, 30 years. Man, hell, nobody I wants to do that. I got time for that, bro. Listen, I don't have a seller. I, I buy to try. <laughs> That's my whole deal. I love it. You know what I mean? And so, no, you hit it right on the head because my, my whole vibe with this whole wine world is I'm, how, how can I make wine – more approachable. How can I make this wine world more approachable? Right. There's a stigma of luxury and how people swirl and evaluate it, and you have to be a snob in certain industries. Like you don't have to be. It's fermented grape juice. Like relax. That's and you're it's. you're you're chilling with your necklace, a tank top. That's wine. Wine. Normally, this is the fanciest I've ever dressed because I I really thought, man, I'm going on with a song. Normally, <laughs> I dress like a pig, um, and then I get on with the song, and he's got a backwards hat. He's got, you know, he's got like, he's got a bunch of MVP things yeah. in the back. This is, hey, this is a wood, it's a wooden chain. He's got, listen, you no, know, I'll take this thing off. No, no. Come on now. Um, so that's, no, so, like, what I was saying is that's, that's the whole vibe with the brand is let's make it approachable. How can I turn beer drinkers into wine drinkers? Big time. You know, how can I, how can I truly make it simple? fun and you learn from me where I just keep it simple and basic and, and like I said less approach that's my same approach when talking when I'm on TV talking about football being an analyst is I want to really bring you guys into the huddle show you what we learned and be a be an educator to the masses you know yeah you can say down and in you don't have to say well it was a double wide and the first guy slot ran a dig and it's nobody like no one knows that and so in wine I don't ever talk to my list they they all have my email, Eric at Booker Wines, right? They can email me questions, and they do nightly, and I answer every one of them. But that's to the geeks. Most of the people want to know it's great. So we'll go into Grenache, and I know Will's a big Grenache fan, and I know on his list he will sell you other Grenaches. Remember, man cannot live on Booker, Ripper, or Oblier alone. We have to venture out. Will's going to take you to different worlds, uh, uh, you know, different cities, different countries. Grenache. I'm gonna take a group to Booker once we're able to travel again. Oh, that's 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 done, and and we will we'll do this thing. Grenache is always gonna be lighter by its DNA. Grenache does not have massive color, and right. so it's gonna be much more Pinot-ish, but it's more diverse. So with a great Grenache, you're gonna be able to make a great Grenache a little more masculine, 
or equally as feminine to an elegant coastal pinot where there wasn't a lot of sunlight, not a lot of color. So Grenache should always be either light strawberries or what will absolutely nail stewed, stewed red fruits. And that's, I was waiting to see what he was going to say and he greased it because we like to make it a little bit bigger, more dense. You know, our, our alcohol, my next year's, my 18s are coming in at probably 14.4. My 19s, I think, are 13.9 to 14. But they still have this just voluptuous, just boom, you know. Uh, there's a lot of things we can't say on video anymore that we used to be able to say. But anyways, they're big and, uh, yeah. So next, that's light. And that's why we start there, right? Your palate, you don't want to start with Cabernet and then go to Grenache. Very difficult. So now, like, if you were to blind taste, you're like, oh man, this has like the color of a new world Pinot. But then once you end up tasting it, you definitely get the elevated alcohol, you know, which is like the warmness back here. And that, okay, not and, Pinot. And when, when Will says new world, he would say new world versus old world. Um, new world just means more American palate. Old world would be rustic, not a lot of wood, not a lot of extraction. There's just kind of two stuff. high alcohol. And alcohol plays usually a lot to do with it, although it really doesn't as much anymore, Will, because the new Chateauneuf's, uh, the right. new Bordeaux's. Up to like 16, right? 16, five. I can't drink it. And my reason for coming down, I'm not getting sanctimonious, high acid, low, or, uh, high acid, low alcohol. Man, you kiss my ass on that stuff. I want to make what I like, what I can drink. And I, at 52, my people know this, but I'll tell yours. I don't process the booze. Plus, I like to drink, man. I love wine, and I love lots of it. I don't want to have two glasses and be cooked for the night and be like chugging water going, shit, right. this party's over. So, Will, let's go real quick before we go into Harvey and Harriet. If anybody has Harvey and Harriet, pour a glass, grab your Corvin or whatever you got. We got I just got one. We got a huge announcement. They're money, man. I just did a deal with this guy. For all you, we're doing a deal on our, our website. We don't. We don't pimp shit. We don't make any money off this. But we want you to know that it's so fun to go into your wine cellar with a Coravin at night and try a 20-year-old wine, a 10-year-old wine, a new wine, to see if you think it's ready. Coravin will plays a great role in telling you if something's ready. Once you put it in your glass, it'll spin it really good, let it air out a little bit to get any of that argon. That I know it's inert, but once it hits the wine, to me, it has a quick, funny reaction. Spin it. Get rid of it. Um, but Harvey and Harriet, we got a great announcement coming next week. I could It's the most exciting announcement I've ever had at Booker, but I'll hold off on it. But this, we developed this in the name of my mother and father, Harvey and Harriet, and the, 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 the uh, label's on a, a tightrope. And it's just kind of a tightrope of life, kind of what COVID's doing to all of us, right? You fall off into the abyss. You know, it's, it's the tightrope of the kids, school, um, paying, divorce, death, and right. at the end of the day, wanting to have a great glass of wine, but in this price point, the wine is shit. It's sugar. It's all these manipulated, you know what I'm talking about. Right. It's all the mega purple, the crap wines, and my goal was to bring Americans a cult-style wine that they could blind against anything in their cellar without crap, organically farmed, uh, legit. No, no, nobody's tricking anybody. Not a high margin. Really, really quick question. What is, I was having a conversation with my wife about this uh, yesterday. What is, what is the biggest difference between organically farm and biodynamic farm? So by, not a lot, except biodynamic tends to have more microbial activity in the soil. Biodynamic technically is only means you got to add biodynamic preparations. The horn manure, it's like this much. And you're like, right, I'm going to spread that on 100 acres. But there's so much microbial activity in that that every test that's been done in the last 20 years of soil makeup to biodynamic, organic, and chemical, the biodynamic always has the highest micro makeup, biodiversity in their soil. So all it means is you follow those preps. Then Maria Toon comes in, and you got to follow the calendar, the lunar calendar of when you add them, right. how there's you a, there's, a long, there's an actual process you have yeah. to follow. Yeah, yeah. But we do both. At Booker, we're biodynamic and organic. I don't make my farms farm biodynamically, but I do make them farm organically. So let's move real quick. If you all want to get Harvey and Harriet in your glass, 
65% cab, and then it's got a bunch of dark fruit, Malbec, Petit Verdot, Syrah in it. But, Will, I want to real quick, where did your – I'm taking too long. So where did your interest in wine – when did it happen? Yeah, so I, always, I enjoyed it, you know, in college, and then I didn't really take it seriously. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, you went to Boston. You were in Boston. All the rich kids. <laughs> Nobody enjoys wine in college. That's bullshit. I had Casal Garcia. That was six bucks. Shut up. Vino <laughs> right, right. Verde, right? All right? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So you are drinking in college. Thank you very much. Uh, I did enjoy some Colorado City. But then when I when I went to uh, the Packers, that same year I was drafted, we signed Charles Woodson, who has his own uh, winery yeah. in Napa. It was 24 wines. Now he has Intercept, uh, which is his uh, $20 bottle of market value wine. So every time we went, we traveled to away games, he would take the defensive backs out to dinner. And at these dinners, um, we would he would order like really cool wine. And so through those dinners and hanging out with him, that's when I found out he was in the business. And I, I thought that was super interesting because I did have that mindset of like, man, wine is is for a certain echelon. And he was extremely humble. He, yeah, he, he did very well for himself, but he never showed that, you know. So I thought that was really cool. And that's what made me want to study and learn more about the wine industry. So that's kind of where it started. And then like most people saw the movie Psalm and that changed in terms of, okay, there's a different way to evaluate this wine. So that propelled me to go and get uh, my W set level two. And then recently I got my uh, court of masters, small a level one. Damn. So, so yeah, so that's what, that's what's fun. I, I love what, what really made me fall in love with the culture of wine is uh, in football. I was, I'm a huge historian. Like I love the guys who paved the way for us. Yeah. That's why I feel like my knowledge about, older generations I, I know a lot and for wine I love the stories of how it was made why it was made you know I just found out Moscato became popular in the U.S. because when the World War II veterans came back that was the popular drink that they had so that's why you know it became popular in the U.S. so little things like that same thing how Alsace Germany one had one year and then yeah. France had it another year so that's what that's why I love um, everything about wine because the history well it's such an addictive as you guys can all see behind me i'm literally in my guest house where i do these from normally occasionally i do them at the house but this is the house my kids grew up and you can see all the real vineyard this is sabachi court uh will when you come up uh this will be where we put you um I, I, i'll crush you in bocce bro i do we'll, we'll talk about that later but uh, the beauty of the wine world you guys is and, the, and, and what excites me about what you're doing will is it booker I have to focus on my vineyard. Like today, I'm on a quad all day. All week, I'm in the truck at vineyards going around. I've got to make quick determinations of how to prune, how to shoot them, what to drop, what we can carry. You get really the fun job. I'm focused on five, six, seven, eight SKUs. You get to introduce people to the world. And it really is a lifestyle. And, and, and what attracted me to it um, – my first experience really was in a restaurant in San Francisco called Bertolucci. First time I'd ever been in a normal restaurant. Growing up, we never we couldn't go out. I mean, we'd go to Denny's or whatever occasionally. But uh, And I went into this place, and they had these tuxedos on. Now, in hindsight, they were probably all dirty. You know, with the, hey, it was Italian. They made them wear tuxedos. <laughs> and I started following one like you did, and I'm like, this is a lifestyle. And the lifestyle was also, though, as you know this, look at your body still. The lifestyle was about food, about where the food is procured from. And so you and me have this lifestyle, and all y'all out there, you have this lifestyle. It's it's addictive because we're worried about where our beef is from, where our wine is from, how it's farmed, the history of it. It's, it is a life of its own, and it's just such a special um, – just such a special deal. So I want to ask you, what services, what products, what do you, what's Wine MVP? What, what's the model of the business? How do my folks follow you? How do they, how do they spend some money? So, yeah. So yes, the company is called the Wine MVP. And what it is, is basically it's a personal concierge service. So there's two entities to it. I have the personal concierge side where I personally shop for, you know, certain celebrities like I just finished uh, Matt Ryan seller the MVP quarterback of the Falcons I just finished his seller inventory I you know I finished probably last month 
Reggie Bush, I did his seller Real cool. uh, as well, his inventory. And then Richard Sherman, I sent him, you know, cases once in a while uh, to his house. And so that's the person who concierge is going to be uh, trips. As I mentioned, I'm going to bring a bunch of people to Booker. I mean, I have trips to Bordeaux and Burgundy, Argentina lined up. So that's the person. And that's not just like personal athletes. If you're, you you know, buy a high-end wine and you want to be included, that's part of it. And my so thing what, what's the website? What, what, how do I find the, the wine MVP.com? Cool. So my whole, that's what I started with first. And I'm like, man, how can I bring this cool vibe, this cool feeling to everybody, you know, with, with like the luxury feel too. So that's when I decided to create the wine MVP subscription monthly club. And so with that, it's two bottles that I sit down and I pick out with, I end up partnering with a wine exchange uh, because they just, they agreed to be my uh, good dudes, good dudes, great dudes, actually. Yeah. Amazing guys there. And we, uh, I sit down with them and I pick out out of a hundred wines, I pick out two wines that I'm going to ship to you that month for 79 98. And with that, uh, you get really cool uh, trading cards in there that describe the wine. Hold on. Let me find that. <laughs> it's super cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's 79.98. That's it. It's super cool. Uh huh. It's super cool. While he's uh, looking, guys, Harvey and Harriet. I'll get them for you. But anyhow, so yeah, so with that, you get uh, two tr two cool trading cards that come in the box, and then cool tasting notes, and then also if you go to our YouTube channel, the Wine MVP, I actually explain that month's box. Uh, with cool taste, you know, so it's cool, man. It's it's super fun. Uh, already, a, a lot of people are signing up. People who the great thing, like we mentioned earlier, people who have no idea about wine are signing up because it's like, okay, he's making it more intriguing. Where I do actually want to learn because he's making it less intimidating. Well, like in your video, your video, any guy that formerly was a whiskey or just a beer drinker can go to your YouTube, chill with his partner, put you on. That's what this COVID has done, and it's going to help your business because now I can, in the luxury of my own home, instead of being nervous about what you sent me, I can turn you on. Right. And it, that's the great thing. And now you're going to explain it simply to me. And uh, I dig it, man. Well, uh, sign me up. I got to do a lunch in the vineyard at Tokelon with Matt Ryan and his one of his close friends, Jeff, Jeff Sprecher. Uh, okay. what a, what a great guy. Uh, he's incredible. Um, anyways, so we'll move to Harvey and Harriet. Take us through it. Well, hopefully it's not corked. Yours isn't. I use TCA free corks, but one sneaks through. So now no, we're moving we're mainly good. cab base. Yeah, 60 cab, right? 20 Six, Syrah. 65. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's sick, dude. It's awesome. Yeah. Bigger. Remember, you can't drink a big wine every night. And this is the beauty of your club. You'll hit all levels. So this wine's a big wine, right? But you're not going to chill at 5 p.m. as the sun's going down in Ladera. You're going to want to all sauce, uh, white berg, uh, whatever, whatever is in. But, in oh, room. but the way you made this, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not overwhelming. Can. You, exactly, because cabs are known for real for being very tannic, you know, have a call over and be like, oh, I want I want a steak, I want a burger. But no, this is, you know, at the right temperature, this is this is awesome, man. You know, because you did, like you said, you got the structure from the cab and then you added the other wines, uh, other grapes in there to add color and to comment. And, you know, I know you're a big all about, you know, science and technology in terms of what you want to do. We want to bring tannins down. Yeah. So we'll bring Syrah in, which is very low tannin, because the last thing you want to do if you're at your house on the deck is be like <laughs> dried out, right? You want this to come across your in the front of your palate, through your mid, and your finish, and just be like, let's go again, man. Let's go again. But if it's all tannic, it's messed up, it's dry, that's when you have to have a food complement. So, right. so we'll move real quick. So we can get into some fun stuff. Let's go to MFN real quick, ladies. Um, I'm gonna pull it out in another one of these big funny Rito glasses. What are these glasses like? Call. Well, have you seen these funny glasses from Riedel yet? 
I they just test marketed these. Can you see how it's swagger yeah, right there? Like, exactly. It's almost like a. Uh, yeah, I see that. It's weird. I don't know. When they came, man, I'm like, what the hell? They swear by it. You know, Riedel doesn't mess around. They spend a lot of money with R and D. They got a stronger base. Zalto is Zalto, man. It's the shit. But the problem with Zalto is the base snaps so easy. Um, so jump into my favorite neighbor real quick. So my announcement's going to have something to do with my favorite neighbor also. This wine, Will, as you know, was created in homage to my neighbor, Stefano Seo, who was my French mentor that taught me how to make cab. Uh, I then went to Napa and learned from some of the masters there five, eight, ten years ago, but he always called me his favorite neighbor. So I, when I made this wine, I wanted it as an homage to Stefan from La Venture, and it's, it's, it's Cab, Petit Verdot and Syrah, but it's predominantly Cabernet Sauvignon. Why don't I, you like the, I like the communication cans. That was cool. Old school, <laughs> old school. Will, take us through this, uh, My Favorite Neighbor, which is 75% Cab. Take us through uh, this. By the way, the website's myfavoriteneighbor.com. Um, and then we're at, of course, bookerwines.com. Take us through the My Favorite Neighbor, Will. Yeah, so, you know, giveaway if I'm going to blind taste this, I can see that it's it's purple, you know. That's that's kind of cat for me and then on a nose, especially because it's, it's a 17, it's still fairly young. I get, you know, the bell pepper uh, smell on there. I guess, I guess the psalm term is what, pyrazines, is what you can get from a wine like that. We don't get pyrazines. You're getting a little more vegetal. Pyrazines is more a Napa thing for overgrowth. They happen early in the cycle, but but a good call. Varietal characteristic, absolutely. Yeah, and then lots of red fruits, lots of black fruits in there. You think, you think strawberries, you think blackberries, you know, even maybe sometimes you might get a little blueberry in there too. So that would be from the Syrah that would bring that in there. So the big goal with this is exactly what Will just said. We want we want to show it as a cab. So we want cab characteristic. We want you to smell it and know it's Cabernet, which Will got right off the bat. And then he said something that was very funny. He said purple fruits. We call them blue fruit. It's the same exact term, right? It's a mixture of your red and black fruits. And you nailed it. I, I couldn't have done it better. It starts with red fruit, but then it meets in the back. Those blackberries, the blacker, more overripe fruits, hits them in the middle, and we it gets to be what we call blue or purple fruits. Right, and that's more confirmed on the palate is the, the blue fruits that you're talking about. 100%. And then yeah. a long finish, you don't want, we don't want those big tannins again. We want this to be elegant. We want it to be seamless. Um, yeah, cool, man. Oh, hey, I want to share something. What's I want that? to share something with you. Okay, fire. So I have notes. From when we met at Phil's house. You were a copious notes, man. You head down. So, y'all, I go I go meet uh, uh, Will at, at one of our very close friends, one of my best friends' house, a guy named Phil in Ladero Ranch, Phil Suave. And Will shows up, and it's like 10 at night. And Because he called me last night and he said, hey, come by Eric's here from Booker. And I'm like, like, all I want to do is go to bed, man. I had been in San Diego. I had three dinners with a bunch of oh, buddies. You were showing wines, right? That's why. I had three dinners in a row. I was at Pample right. Moose. I was at my buddy Chuck Smith's house. So I show up, and he's like, you got to meet my buddy Will. I'm like, man, no. Don't he said, it's Will Blackman. He played at BC. You will remember him. I go, oh, I want to go out front and run some patterns. Because I still – I'm going to get into that in two seconds. I wanted to run patterns in the, in the park the next day. But I said, you did not. oh, Will Blackman? Let's go real not. quick. Let's go. You, don't Listen, don't lie to your people. You do not want to run routes. So, so Will, blah, blah, blah. Will shows up. Man, he is tuned up and ready, and he's got his pad, and I was so proud. I knew right away, you did what Justin Smith at Saxon told me I had to do when I first came here. You need to immerse yourself in the business like right. Peyton did, like Tom Brady did, like Brett did, like you came on and said you did. You were a student of the game. You immersed yourself in what I was talking about how my soil was, pH, acid, blah, blah, all the shit that the public doesn't want to know. That's why Will's a real deal. We don't bring clowns on here. Will's a real deal, and he's a student of the game, and it's why I think that 
his talent level is going to be – there's no ceiling for him, just like there was really no ceiling in football. So, so – uh, Go ahead. Sorry. So we're going to play a quick game. No, really quick, though. But I'm going to I want to list some of the things that you told me. Go. Go. You go. Okay. You said, number one, you said build your knowledge. Right? And so I was like, well, I'm getting these certifications. Boom, did that. Start talking about the biz. And then you were like, okay, I need to have self-discipline. I need to learn the playbook. You know, health, because it's going to be long working hours. You know, marketing, build my brand. And then also, you know, will people buy it? How will it work? What's the marketplace? What are, what is, what are the inherent risks? And then can you make money? <laughs> well, every, well, you wanted to get in the wine business making wine. And I said, don't do it. And if you're going to do it, you got to have a plan. Everybody comes to me, man. I get, hey, I want to pay you to be a consultant. Man, I ain't consulting anybody. I, I'm, trying, I'm worried about myself. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I got enough. No, did, you say, bro, did you say you were worried about yourself? Is that what you said? No, I'm worried. Well, yeah, I did. I didn't mean it. <laughs> what I meant was I'm worried about my own brand. I, like, like right. I, I need to focus there. It's not in my DNA to be a consultant. I'm a farmer and a winemaker. I can't tell other people. And the re main reason I can't do it, and what I told you that night, and you just hit on it, I said, don't do it. And if you're right. going to do it, you better have a plan. What's your five-year? What's your 10-year? What's your 20 year? Don't just think, gosh, I love wine. I'm going to go make it. And you follow it and you listen. And that's why your plan in your business is, is going to work. We're going to play a game called Rapid Fire. Shoot. Um, what's, the, what's the main fun activity you and the family are doing during, doing during COVID? Swimming. <laughs> what's the main fun thing? Well, my wife is extremely competitive I, I just set up the ping pong table in our garage so ping pong tell her I'll, like, tell her i'll beat her 11-0 but anyways that's beside the point uh, she can go ask jock Pedersen about that uh awesome. let's uh what's the best thing you two are doing uh keep it uh pg rated what's the best thing you and the wife are doing when you're tucking the littles down um we either we either hang out outside and, and just and just communicate or we go for like little walks right here in our roundabout the biggest thing is we, we are really good at communicating but we talk more you know we really invest in each other's uh well-being that's the that's the biggest thing that we've done you know we're investing in our marriage just with communication i dig it man we're doing a lot of walks sometimes two a day before and after dinner I'm getting in the gym still, but I dig it. Uh, I love a lot of it. Netflix, a lot of Netflix and lots of Amazon Prime. Yeah, yeah. I just finished uh, the last season three of uh, Dead to Me, uh, and I'm caught up in billions. And I'm, I, I, got, I hate to admit this, but my son, the only I'm a big Italian buff, and the only because it's too big and too daunting. But my son started, so I'm going to start uh, Sopranos this weekend. I've seen everything else. I have not seen Sopranos. I know you're laughing at me because it's still I'm not. I didn't finish Sopranos. It's still considered the uh, Peaky Blinders yet? Peaky Blinders? I yeah. started it, but then I looked at five seasons. I'm like, I, what I'm looking for is one season, two seasons. Because you know what? <laughs> Game of Thrones killed me. It took it took time off my life. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch Bodyguard. Bodyguard? All right. Yeah. All right. Have you and your wife done two seasons? One. What? Have you and your wife done uh, Dead to Me? Yeah, she actually stayed up till two thirty, finishing season two. All right, all right, it's it's, it's pretty fresh. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. back to rap. That same rapid fire shit. Will, um, okay, number two. If we get to an open field, and I got Brett Favre or somebody with a sling, and you don't know the route, and it's got to be a route more than five yards, can I catch four out of ten passes running against you? No. And I can I can be wearing vineyard boots. You won't. A lot of people have said this. I'm gonna say I'm gonna catch 50% of those balls targeted if the corner. Well, I'm just saying. So here's what we're gonna do. When you up when you're up here with your crew, we're gonna run routes. And I got a hit for pride. I got a hit on three of ten, right? You shouldn't allow 30% to me. I'm 52. <laughs> Slow and tired. Come on. Is that fair? I got to hit on well, three of ten. You can, you can bump me within five. 
but I can line up yeah. off the line of scrimmage. That's a deal. What are you, about 140 pounds? What do you weigh? Yeah, I mean, I'm only 55. I'm going to lie to you. <laughs> I've lost a couple of LBs. Come on, man. Just say I'm all there, though, bro. I'm not even going to lie to you about it. We have to, and it has to be during harvest. Shit, it could be when I, I thought I'd be in the middle of the night, wake me up, shake me, and say, let's go. I don't care when it is. All right? Uh, uh, let's go. Okay, next one. So it's I get, a, I get a lawsuit for assault. Three of ten? And I got two torn shoulders, man, and a, and a bad wheel. Three of ten. Yeah. Is that three of ten? You're not getting three. That's like stealing. Okay. Y'all heard it. When Will comes up, we go live. This is going to be funny. Okay, next. Um, what music are you spinning in the house right now? What's the go-to? You can go overall genre, and then what are the go-to couple artists? You know what? My music palette, I am everywhere. Like, I was just listening to uh, Janis Joplin earlier, and then I was listening to Future earlier. Listen to Miles Davis. Chanon, we're all over the place. I dig it. I dig it. I'm on... I'm the same way. I walk in there and see, as you saw on the live, I went with the Chronic, but it was between the Chronic and George Jones. And I had just finished spinning Abbey Road, and right behind that was Migos. And then, you know, I'm, 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 I'm right now a big Migos guy, uh, and Post Malone I'm big into. Anything my daughter's on, she's just got such a good palate. We do a lot of festivals and concerts together. My, my wife, she used to be uh, signed to Jermaine Dupri. She had her oh, uh, yeah. deal you know, with Def Jam, so, you know, our, our house is just all about music. All right, so when you come up, there's a record player, there's vinyl in the guest house, and there's three in my house. We're spinning at all times. Okay, next, uh, wine. What's your go-to? If you're on an island, what's your go-to white? What's your go-to red variety? My go-to white will be Chablis. Okay. If I'm on an island, which would be perfect, because I'm on an island, she believe goes well with shellfish. Is there any yeah. particular? Yeah, he's a very smart man because really, on the top soil, it's what is it? Oyster shell, the soil, and then clay below that. Yeah. Seashell is over there. Exactly. Seashell. Yep. Um, for my for reds, man, I'm not, I'm not staying burgundy. <laughs> I might have to say a burgundy. I hate bread, and most of burgundy's bread. And for those of you who don't know what bread is, it's the Band-Aid taste or the barnyard. It's, it comes in two forms. No, I take that back. You it's know what a I want? gift that keeps giving. For white, I just, I just want unlimited supply of champagne. That's what I want. For yeah, there you, now we're talking. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's what I want. Unlimited supply of champagne. I don't need anything else. Okay, but red burgundy, I love it. My problem with burgundy is it's the prices that I love – are the prices. <laughs> yeah, I don't need anything else, really. And, and I'll go with the New World. Actually, no. Containers Malbec for, for red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. legit. It's, yeah. I, listen, I'm a big fan. Great <laughs> but job. taste you on Malbec from behind me out of barrel. It, 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 it's a dead ringer for Katana. Um, All right. If, if I timed you right now, what would you run the 40 in? Right now, probably 459 right now. Cut the video. <laughs> Cut the video. He's it, 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 bullshit. He he ran a four five nine at BC. I watched guys run by him like he was nailed to the ground. Four five nine. What do you think I run right now? How old are you? Fifty two. Five two. <laughs> That's giving me a lot. Hey, by the way, everybody, y'all laugh at that. You try to get out and stay in the fives. You pull a hamstring. That's moving down the line. Bye. Well, I'm yeah, telling you, five two. I'll give you five two. I ran a 499. But but I do 52 downhill. No, no, no. 499. And I right now I, I I might pull my hammy. A year ago, 499. You're so full of it. Right? Let's let's do that too. 499, 499 Mississippi's or 499 like an actual. On show. movement. No, on movement. 499. We're going when we the other We're thing better off just going into your basketball court and going shot for shot. We're better off just doing that. Sasha thought the same. He was wrong. He, he was dead wrong to go to his site. He had to start shooting blind layups. I mean, I had him S to H, and he had to go to the line. This guy hit two free throws to beat the Celtics in game seven. So he's down. He's getting – he's getting. I got him on the ropes. I'm just pounding at him. 
he and goes everybody who's listening, I know, you know, Eric is just, he's a very popular, incredible, supportive. And yes, he does have a massive ego. He knows that. He knows he's a massive ego. But I am here to humble him in all aspects of athletics. Okay? Let's go. Let's go. So I'm, better, out, I'm, better in, I'm better in, like, bocce and ping pong. <laughs> even bocce. Bocce, cricket, tennis. Um, I don't play tennis. I don't play I, tennis. I'll kill you in bocce. Left hand, right. What do you want to do? Ping pong. It's it's a bad move. My next target in ping pong is Clayton Kershaw because I heard Kersh is he's a nasty lefty. So if you go, you know, you're used to hitting to the right backhand. You go to Kershaw's. It's a you know, it's he's going to put the ball off your throat. But we'll so I, have a, I have a question. Why Paso? Okay, Paso. You guys want to know why Paso? It's very simple. For the same reason, Will his club doesn't it charges seventy nine and not two seventy nine. Because who the wants to pay 225 300 400 you I, I don't want to go no disrespect man I got I got a huge Silicon Valley list they know how I feel I don't I, like, so get to the point I, I don't like the aristocracy in Napa I love Napa I love my friends there but I don't Paso. I don't not, like the oh, Paso. it was it was more and that does not, that does not disrespect Napa it was more real. It was just me. So you come to Paso, and it's real. Everybody treats everybody normal. Everybody respects everybody. You're not judged on your Lamborghini. And I used to go to Napa before it was like that, when all these superstars that are still there, and that's the way they live. They drive trucks. I didn't like when everybody came in with all this money. The regular Napa is still Napa, and they're badasses and they're ballers. But I didn't like the new owners that came in. I love the new owners in Paso. Hard work, uh, uh, everyday mentality, didn't make you feel small. If you wanted to buy one bottle, that was cool. Um, it's so just, did Paso feel like what Napa used to be in the 50s? No, what it felt like in the early 80s. Okay. And, and still feels like, with my friends, shit, my friends – when I go drink champagne at Cadet, which is the best freaking downtown bar in Napa, when I go to Cadet with Fern Frias, with Tony Biaggi, with Juan Ricardo, Sam Kaplan, this is Frias Wines, Arkenstone, and Memento Mori, these guys are down to earth, just like the best people in the world, right? Tony at Hourglass. These, these are great human beings. They, they don't get caught up in this, but my problem was – when I went there and I was looking at land, I was made to feel by the upper echelon that didn't work. I wasn't made to feel good. I love to visit there still. I'd love to start a project there still. But why I chose this was because I didn't have money and I just fit in better. And I love the Grenache and Syrah. I love the Grenache and Syrah. And so don't please don't take that as a hate because I, I do love that area immensely in Sonoma, but this is where I felt as a... You just felt more accepted there when you started in the business. I just felt more accepted, money. yeah. So, all right, Will, uh, your wine club, uh, winemvp.com? Yeah, thewinemvp.com. Okay, T-H-E. Yeah. On social media, is at the wine MVP. also at Will Black, and you can find me. But yeah, you sign up, seventy nine ninety eight a month. You get two really cool wines. I already picked them out for this month. And for this for this month, being Father's Day is coming up, I'm going to throw in a good old trading card in there of myself. <laughs> Signed by yours truly. I dig it, man. Hey, uh, on our site, we're doing tasting kits. We're doing a ones deal, right? And we loaded that with our top, top wine. Um, uh, it's the Booker Badger bundle. It's Harvey and Harriet, Oblier, uh, MFN. But we're, we're trying to well, – you never used to be able to buy on our website. You had to be on the list. But we're trying to make it easier on people. Um, Will, I, I, I can't thank you enough. I did what oh, you're doing. Man. I, love that, I love that you just spanked me right there and brought me back in uh, because you know I got that chip about where I came from. And it's just not about that, just like your deal isn't. Um, I'm excited for you. However, our Booker team can help you. Um, we're excited to do it. you got a great thing going. 
I'd love to be on it myself. So make sure uh, uh, you, you let me know so we can get signed up. And okay. uh, any last parting words other than anything COVID, anything you want to say to finish up? Yeah, no, especially um, times like this, the, the one thing that I have been able to do in any kind of adverse situation is I learned to embrace change, right? We're so used to the way we do things, but it's not always going to be our way. There's that old saying, right, you know, play the hand you're dealt. And it's true, like, make the most out of the situation. You know, the, the quote I live by playing football, because I've been released, I've been injured, I've been, you know, not brought back. I, I went through so much adversity. So I, my quote was, adversity can cause you to do two things. It can cause you to break as a human being, or it can cause you to go break records. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's my whole vibe is like any situation you're in, like find a way to make it positive. Like to be home, yeah, we're in the house, we're stuck, can't go anywhere, but man, I get to watch my kids every day. I get to spend every minute with my wife, you know, so things like that. Uh, I love to point that out as well. Let's quit looking at the problems. Let's start looking at the solutions. Uh, we either going to curl up in the corner and suck our thumb or we're going to do stuff virtually. We're going to do have an online presence. We're going to FaceTime call people. Uh, greatness comes, like you said, from adversity or failure comes from it. I couldn't agree more. Stay positive. Look for solutions, not problems. Um, I dig it. Everybody out there, you know I preach this nonstop. Continue to shop local. Uh, and you shop nationally as well. But support those people you were supporting. There are so many bartenders that are going to disappear on you, so many restaurants. We have to spend money. Do not save your money now. Spend what you can spend. We are almost out of this especially in California, um, especially at Booker where we can taste you without ever touching, going near you. Spend your money because these people need it. We need them to stay in business. So keep spending, uh, stay positive, stay vigilant, uh, keep exercising. And uh, Will, man, I love you. I love what you're doing, your positive vibe. It, it, it reverberates in me. Uh, I want to be more like you, and I mean that. I respect mm -hmm. you. And uh, cheers, brother. Love you. Support this guy, Booker, and my favorite neighbor family.